Hey, Dave Rutter here, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about the secret that a billionaire media owner, a media network owner used to grow one of the highest engaged channels on the internet. Uh, and the subject of this video is practical value. Practical value is a really, really powerful thing. Uh, we've touched on it a couple of times already. And essentially what practical value is, is creating some kind of value, some, usually some kind of content on the internet which helps your audience in, in some way, probably related to your product or service. So some way which actually helps them to do something which is related to what you do. So the reason that practical value is so powerful is because A, it helps them to actually do something and builds that trust and that relationship between you and them. B, it demonstrates your ability to help them. It demonstrates your authority uh, within your niche, within your niche. Uh, it also harnesses the power of those shares that we've spoken about in previous videos. Uh, so you get not only your own authority from the video itself, but also anybody who shares it is essentially recommending your business in, in, a, in a kind of roundabout way. So you get all these added benefits from just basically doing good for people, like helping people out. So the reason I've drawn these kind of three concentric circles is because this demonstrates how practical value can actually be used to help you uh, to help you sell more stuff. Everything that we do here with Viral by Design has got to be centered around, as, as this is for business owners, right? People who are trying to sell stuff online, create value to provide, to, to create revenue online. And therefore everything needs to fall back to how does this actually make uh, ROI for my business? How does this actually um, uh, create customers that I can provide value for that can give me revenue, right? So. The, these concentric circles essentially uh, demonstrate the three core types of people in your audience that might be watching your video right now. So right here, these guys are your favorite people. These are the ones that are ready to buy right now and they know that they need your product. They know that they have the problem or the desire that it solves or satisfies. They are ready to buy from you right now. And this is where the majority of marketers and businesses stop. This is where the book stops. And this is where so many heat people hit a plateau in their business or in their marketing. Because they this saturates, they get as many people that are already in this, um, this particular pool of people that are ready to buy your product or service or sign up for your product or service. And then the book stops there and you hit this plateau and it's extremely frustrating. But then the reality is there's a lot more people watching your content. There's a lot more people observing your channel online. There's a lot more people that are aware of you. So this is the this is the next um, concentric circle. So this is, this is your warm audience. These are people that probably already know that they've got the problem that you solve or the desire that you satisfy, but they're not quite ready to buy from you yet for, for whatever reason. Maybe the relationship's not there yet. Maybe they're not ready to, um, to actually purchase the product. Maybe they're not at a point in their life where they can spare the time to, to, to use the product or service. Um, for whatever reason, they're just not quite ready to buy yet. As you can see, this is a significantly larger portion than these people. So it's very important not to ignore these folks. Now, of course, there is a third concentric circle, which is um, uh, irrelevant. So these are people that will not ever buy from you. This is the majority of people in reality and the majority of people in the world, unless you are McDonald's or Coca-Cola or somebody like that. Uh, but the majority of people are irrelevant. They're not ever going to buy from you. But there's, um, you know, you could, you could put multiple different layers into this, uh, into these concentric circles to show people who are not quite ready, ready. They know they've got a problem, but they're not aware of you, et cetera, et cetera. There's lots of different ways of viewing it. But for the purposes of this exercise, we're just concentrating on these three. So these guys, you put an ad in front of them, they've purchased your products. Fantastic. That's great. These next people, then you have to consider um, helping to build that relationship with them, helping to demonstrate your authority, helping to demonstrate that you know what you're doing and helping them as well so that they feel, um, if I'm getting this kind of value from this person, if I purchase their product, then it's got to be good, right? So this is a really important group of people and providing practical value here, I don't know why I wrote an R, there's no R in practical, well there is an R in practical value, but it's not relevant to any acronym. So providing practical value, to these people starts to build that relationship and starts to warm them up and guess what eventually these guys once they know like and trust you enough they're going to come and purchase your products they were already thinking about doing it but the fact that you kept at the forefront of the mind the fact that you kept on helping them you were providing results in advance you were providing practical value and building that relationship and, and that authority with them meant that you were able to take them from warm into this uh, audience of, uh, of buyers, people who've actually purchased with you. So doing that with uh, with practical value posts not only turns them from warm people and into um, and into buyers, but also, uh, and most importantly, when it comes to viral by design, we're going to engage by creating practical value posts. We're going to engage those shares.
So if we think about those shares that we spoke about before, we're going to create, are we still on camera yet? We're going to create this viral share coefficient. So rather than just, now this is where most people will kind of stop, is creating value which just engaged and engaged and engaged and engaged these people, which is great, right? But essentially what we're doing by creating practical value posts and viral posts is simultaneously while we're creating this value, while we're creating, uh, getting these posts in front of people, we're also engaging shares out of them and we're building this audience bigger and bigger and bigger. Which is useful, right? Because then we have the potential down the line of turning any of these people in this gradually larger and larger audience into buyers. So that brings us on to the third relevant set of people in this particular diagram. And this is the people who are broadly irrelevant. So irrelevant is probably not the word because they are relevant to this, but they're not going to be buyers. Let's actually swap this out for from irrelevant to non-buyers. So these guys are never going to buy your thing. It's not relevant to them, right? But if we think back to the reason that people share stuff, then one of them is social currency. One of them is, how does this make me look? And one of the key reasons that people share stuff is to build their relationship with people. So even though your product right here isn't necessarily going to be relevant to these people, to these non-buyers, they're very likely to know people that it is going to be relevant to. And if you if you get your content simple enough, niche enough, uh, consumable enough, tell stories which indicate to these people, hey, this helps people that you know, then you're going to be able to harness these shares as well. And they're going to feel really good about sharing it with people because it makes them look good. It's practical value. They're helping their friends out and they're making you look good in the process. So this is a really, really important uh concept to, to to use in your in your advertising you can see here practically why that works but in terms of like how you can start to get this across um it varies obviously from business to business it varies from niche to niche but there's always something that you can use uh you can provide some kind of practical value related to your product so it might not necessarily be related directly to your product. It might not solve the problem that your, in fact, it probably doesn't solve the problem that your, that, that your product solves because that's what your product's for, right? But there's probably peripheral things. There's probably things uh, that you can help them with uh, related to, to, your, to your product. So this is what we call peripheral interests. So for example, say if you are a, so my old my old boss, uh, Frank Kern, <laughs> used to always, or in fact, well, still does uh, use the concept of tomato uh, tomato grown. So if you're a tomato gardener, uh, then uh, if you're selling products related to, to, to how to sell tomatoes, for example, like e-products related to how to sell tomatoes, then you might be able to, you're more than likely to be able to help people out with other things around a garden, like the best garden furniture that you could be, you could be using this time of year, how to make your, uh, your soil particularly good uh, so that it accepts the new, uh, you can sell them like God, <laughs> but you start to get the idea. There's things, there's peripheral interest that you can help people out related to your niche, related to your topic uh, that can be useful, that can be practical, that can help people out and also can draw the type of customer towards you that you want. So that's another thing to consider, you know, when you're brainstorming this, what kind of practical value do we provide? What are the other things that those people are thinking about? What are the other things that those people are, are struggling with at any given time in their life? How can you start to create content that helps your ideal type of customer that, that calls them out in this noisy marketplace of social media and, um, and helps them and draws them close to your brand and develops a relationship with you and essentially increases, um, increases this catchment pool of people that, that, that you've got a chance of actually turning into customers. Because as much as you're always gonna have these people that are non-buyers, it doesn't mean that you can't leverage those people. It doesn't mean that they can't get a good time, uh, you know, get a kick out of consuming your content and out of sharing your content with other people. They're certainly not to be ignored uh, because they can help you. Everybody online can help you if you if you engage them in, in some way or another and if you help them, in fact, as well. So I hope that this, uh, this video was useful as ever and I hope that you can see how providing practical value in your marketplace uh, can create social currency, which is far, far more powerful than, um, than, than a lot of real currencies and even ad spend in, in our, um, in our modern day online sphere. And, uh, if this video was useful to you, it'd be great to hear from you in the comments below. <laughs>